had we, any one of us, dared to suggest that we're going to stay on for one more day, we would have lost the complete support of the masses. After a battle between the family of the late Jerry Rawlings and the state over his funeral, Ghana, united in grief, led him home in an elaborate four-day state funeral. You may not believe it, but I'd much rather be known as an artist than as a president, just as I would much rather probably be known for flying skill than being a president. Maybe it's because through this you can see my power of observation, my sense of precision, my, my striving for excellence. I don't know where you found this, but the point is I've kept quiet about this thing because I haven't done my wife's portrait yet, you know. If I had done my wife's portrait also, I would have felt good about, you know, displaying this. For those who knew him through and through, he was larger than life. Former Chief of Defense Staff Brigadier General Joseph Nunu Mensa and former Chief of Staff in the late Jerry Rawlings' office, Nana Atudadze, fondly remember him. He left a legacy, not so much of what he achieved, but the path he laid in front of us for you, the younger ones, to follow to make Ghana a better place. He led principles of accountability. When you are in parliament, you strive for not for yourself, for those that are down there, that they have a better life. But today, our politicians think about themselves alone, how, how big a car they can drive. Is that not important? His life was about modesty, about accountability, about integrity, about the truth. Never believe that Sir Rawlings will be dead. He's always lived. I went with him in 19 years, and we had personal moments. We went through a very difficult period in this country's history. So a period of want, nobody was paid for over three years. The first three years, we barely had any food to eat. Those are the foundations of this country, this modern day. We had several attempts at overthrowing our government, somehow we survived. I think that all these ideas fly back into my mind as I see him in repose and um, it's God's work. We were with him for many years. I was with him for many years, throughout the 19 years. I knew what he meant for Ghana. I knew what he had in mind for Ghana. He played his part. He, I always refer 
to that slogan called uh, the decade that ended the decay. When he took over, when he came onto the scene in 79, this country was on a downward spiral. But he, he stood up, he came into the picture, and he did his best in the circumstances. He was human, he had his own foibles and failings, but on the balance, I think this country has been the better off for, uh, for his life. If I say I'm a politician now, I give my credit to him because uh, I followed his principles, I followed his vision, and I was one apostle that, you know, did everything to make sure that uh, whatever he dreamed of comes true. It's a shocking news, my brother. And he's somebody who wants to kill himself to make sure that those around him are happy. So those who were saying that he was uh, a tyrant, let me put it that way, I did not see him as such. I saw him as somebody who was very caring, who was listening to people and understand the situation that one finds himself and will go at every length, you know, to solve problems of others. We remember vividly when our mother passed. JJ was there and uh, it's unfortunate but this is life. We'll just say we will fondly remember him for everything that he did for the Ahoy family. And uh, where he brought us, what he made of us. Every policy that we are running today emanated from his original policies of rural development, getting this country on the export front, on the investment front, and the uh, infrastructural development, I mean, everything that is going on here. And uh, we just have to keep showing uh, his legacy through the video, the film that we have, so the current generation, the future generation, will see what he did for this country. This was a man who gave me the opportunity together with his wife to serve Mother Ghana. From a very humble background, they therefore identified me and said I should come and join in the government. So I started as a DC, became a member of, a member of parliament for 12 years. And during these four, uh, 12 years, I had the opportunity to serve as a minister for women and children. Uh, youth and sports and also of tourism. So I thank him for giving me a poor girl from a very humble background the opportunity to also, you know, uh, serve our country, Ghana. The values I have learned from, from him and which have carried me all through all these uh, positions is that of honesty, hard work, you know, uh, selflessness, patriotism, and I can name it, humility. I'm happy that I had the opportunity to serve under them and also to learn these human values that have carried me throughout my life. I, I am so sad, uh, but wherever he is now, we thank God for giving him to Ghana and for him giving me the opportunity to serve Mother Ghana. May his soul rest in perfect peace. I was the first person in this country to have interviewed him live. It had never happened before. And it allowed me to get closer to him because until then, I'd never even, well, I'd seen his pictures, but I'd never met him. And it was quite an intense experience because it allowed me to put aside a lot of the things I'd heard and to experience the man for who he was. I found him to be very intelligent, very smart, very, very astute sensitive and what I appreciated along all of this was that he was able to think on his feet and I really appreciated that.
get there. This is the founder of the party. This is the root. This is the man on whose shoulders the party stands. And it does not matter what anybody thinks. My mind tells me that he loved us enough not to leave the party. When I, I went with him and uh, the late Zagadu, who was also a minister under President Mahama, we went for the rice festival. And uh, he put him on the spot, called him to come and tell the gathering at Deba what he was doing in his ministry. And I sat beside him and I thought, oh my God, he's going to call me next. So I looked at him and he said, you the fear? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, so I, I miss that, his spontaneity. I'll miss that. I really will miss that. Hate him or love him, Gary John Rawlings was a great, great citizen of this land. We should celebrate people more when they are alive. Uh, I particularly had an opportunity to meet him uh, on a few occasions during his lifetime. Of course, growing up, uh, living in the Rollins school era, it wasn't a pleasant scene. But with time, I guess that uh, particularly on the onset of the Fourth Republic, uh, we began to realize the positives that he had. And obviously, he made a significant contribution to our country. He had what I would call the last successful coup. Before he, he died, and a couple of years before that, I think he honestly, uh, patriotically managed to reach out to the other divide of, of the politics, if you like. And I think his reconciliation with Akufuado transferred into having a collective national acceptance of who he is. Up until a few years ago, there was still this strong division in terms of one part of Ifla, the political divide, finding appreciation of his years of service and the other having serious issues with certain aspects of his, of his governance. And I think before he died, he managed to, in a significant way, unite the country, especially the ideological divide of the country. <laughs> Even though I went to exile because of former President Rawlings, in 1979, my father was an MP under the regime of Dr. Hila Limam when he staged the coup. But we've come to learn that if you don't stand on principles, you will not be able to correct the future and determine the future. Our democracy has grown through that. Our democracy has become better through that. He's made his several decisions good, challenging ones, and of course, he's been loved by many Ghanaians, millions of Ghanaians. If Papa Jay was to be alive and to contest another election, if the constitution is allowed, he would have been the next president again. So for me, I've learned a lot of lessons from Papa Jay, and those lessons is what I'm going to use in my next campaign. The legacy that this man has left behind, boldness, fairness, and also mm -hmm. is a type that uh, is praying to everybody and I've served Ghana a lot all these years uh, I remember control price I remember uh, where people were going for a square and square because of their greediness uh, that uh, we need to write a book about this man uh, to even send it to schools to teach our younger ones how this man dedicated himself for the democracy of this very country the Christianize me if you may but don't try to Europeanize me.
most Ghanaians love him, in spite of his faults and his shortcomings. He stood for what he believed in, and with passion he worked for it. He worked to provide an example for other nationals to follow. He worked to inspire other people to also develop the, the God-given talents that they had. I believe that um, he is somebody we should learn. To learn the values he stands for and do same. The Rawlings gift that keeps on giving lay in state for a second straight day. President Tekufado and spouse Rebecca, Vice President Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia and spouse Samira, former presidents John Ejekum Kufo and John Dramani Mahama and spouse Lodina, as well as the Chief Justice, Justices of the Supreme Court and others paid their respects. Also in attendance was former President of the Republic of Benin, Yayi Boni, Prime Minister of Niger, ECOWAS President, as well as Speaker of the Togo Parliament, Yawa Jigbadi. As Ghana journeyed home one of its illustrious sons, wife of the late Rawlings, in a moving tribute read by her daughter, Amina, described him as a towering support system she would miss. Jerry, I know that God created us for each other. And today we make a formidable team, notwithstanding the ups and downs of life. We believed in each other and in our dream of making Ghana a country we could all be proud of. One to set the pace for our sub-region and continent. I dare say we did not do a bad job. As you worked assiduously on state matters, I concentrated on empowering the women and improving the quality of life for them irrespective of their origins or creed. We were a team fighting to transform a collapsed state into one of potential prosperity for all. You did your best, and I played my part in my own way. You always said you did not need titles to define you, so you remained Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. You also said you did not need political titles to influence a party to do what is right and honest for Ghana. So for most, you remained chairman. To me, you were and always will be Jerry, my love, my life partner, my friend. You were for Ghana and then for me. I say farewell with the words of Rachel Wallace. Dr. Zanetto Rawlings reminded the gathering just how much of a selfless human he was. You taught us to stand up for those who could not, even at the risk of standing alone. Whatever your faults, whatever your shortcomings, you always thought about the health and well-being of others before yourself. We take solace in the fact that enough hearts were touched by you. Soldier, warrior, father, grandfather, sage, friend, daddy, thank you for sharing your life with us. Thank you for teaching us to be and to do. You will always be our warrior garden. The NDC credits him with extending development to the countryside. For the party, his principles of probity and accountability will live on. Hudu Yahaya is former general secretary of the party. We are consoled by the fact that his legacy of establishing the most enduring democracy in the, count, in the history of the Republic of Ghana bears testimony to the principles and values that pushed him into the political life of Ghana a little over four decades ago. Ghana, Africa, and the world have lost one of those rare leaders who did not put personal aggrandizement over service to the people and nation. President Rawlings, we owe you gratitude for helping in the founding of the NDC, the National Democratic Congress. And we assure you that we will uphold your legacy 
as long as we exist as a political party. Despite rejecting to have the University for Development Studies named after him while he was alive, President Ekufuadu, in his tribute, announced the family has accepted to have him honored that way. I am glad that this has found favor with his family and the necessary formalities will be carried out to achieve this. That is, the Jerry John Rawlings University of Development Studies, Tamale. Such is the measure of the man that the days associated with his political intervention in Ghanaian history are now significant days in the calendar of the nation. Entertainers were not left out. As the world turned its eyes towards Ghana, they rose to the occasion. Liberian-born soul singer Irene Logan and gospel minister Joe Metal performed some of the late Rawlings' favorites on the big stage. Um, I've admired Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings for a very long time and may his soul rest in peace. Impossible Dream is a song that his family said he handpicked himself and that he loved. And, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I delivered it from my heart. I'm so grateful to the orchestra and then the mass choir, the Hamona Choral and I think at Winneba Youth Choir. They've been amazing and rehearsals was amazing. I'm humbled. My mother is from Liberia and uh, we were part of the refugees that came to Ghana to seek refuge. And at the time, Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins um, was president of Ghana. And he played a very big role in making sure that we were able to settle into um, Ghana peacefully. And because of that decision, people like me have been able to have a sound education and be able to grow up in a peaceful environment. Oh, some of the songs that he loved and on a special occasion like this it will be um, great that you know we use it to celebrate him one more time and that was how come we did what we did today yeah. it's a humbling experience um, seeing all all that he is and all, all he was even to this nation um, I'm not that old but I, I, I grew up to see a few of the stuff that he did I think when I was growing up he was the president um, and so uh, his charisma, his enthusiasm, his passion for uh, nation and, and so many other things. So I feel honored and humbled that I even have a privilege of celebrating um, this day uh, of, of, of his burial. The many people who drew inspiration from his life and leadership say they would miss his charisma and just how he gave his life to save Ghana. He was a disciplinarian. He instilled discipline among the populace. Many of the ills of the society today would not have happened under him. It is a painful loss, but I hope his death will teach us valuable lessons for the future. Yesu, ye 
Epoye, mani e gana nyina, wonya de ti se onu ara. Ni po be e fa de gana du ko. Na manye ye o e gba gana ma no ale o. Mi o mi si. Mi si. Ba ji vi su bo a fi rona si ba ba ko te bi. Ta a fa bli bo o. He redeemed Ghana. Without Rawlins, Ghana would have been doomed. We have let him down, but it is not too late. May he help us, even in his passing. The late Jerry Rawlings was accorded full military honors, and as the cortege departed the Black Star Square, it left with the many memories he gave us. Papa Jay is gone, and gone forever. A fitting farewell for a worthy man. The legend lives on.